welcome inside of the Warrior Arena here in Sycamore, Ohio. We've got a big time girls Northern 10 matchup for you coming live and free to your phone, PC, tablet as Buckeye Central takes on Mohawk. Don't go anywhere, free game. Coming up next exclusively right here on the OH Report. things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. He takes the Tostitos, fakes left, goes right, and dives into the salsa. Now that is how you bring home the snacks. What is he doing? Preparing for his next career as a commentator. Isn't he a little young for that? All the best players get broadcast deals these days. Bill's Mafia is going absolutely crazy down here. Isn't that right, Billy? <laughs> so true, so true. Back to you, Josh. Back, back to you. And let's go down onto the field for the coin toss. Doesn't get much better than this. Welcome back to Mohawk High School for our pregame show brought to you tonight by Spirion Mid-Ohio. Hayden Gray, Joshua Banks here with you for the first time the OH Report has ever gone live from Sycamore. Uh, pretty excited to be in here for a, a spectacular Northern 10 matchup uh, right here just a bit past last time, Joshua. Yeah, great game the first time around in New Washington at Buckeye Central where the Buckets beat the Lady Warriors by four points. Should be a lot of fun tonight. Mohawk wants to get revenge, and Buckeye wants to stay on top of the N10. Absolutely. Two teams right and above that halfway point in the conference. So without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's take a look at our team spotlight for the visiting Buckeye Central Lady Buckets, led by head coach Abram Capel. Having a Buckeye Central level year, 12-2, 7-1 in the conference. Uh, average just shy of 50 points per game. Uh, another number that stands out to you, uh, ten, and a, ten and a half steals per game, a team that really likes to get active on the defensive side and probably one of the best shooting teams around the area, 70% from the free throw line, 44% from two, and just below 33% from three. Uh, and it also should be noted, uh, about a month and a half ago, back on December 6th at home, took down this Mohawk team 38-33. One of the best offensive girls basketball teams that we're going to see all year. They shoot, 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 and Coach Capel will even tell you that every day in practice they're going to put up as many shots as they can. Absolutely. And let's take a look at one of those girls that puts up a lot of shots and probably statistically one of the best shooters on the team, if not the best, and that's the one and only Kate Cecil, the senior guard. 13.7 points a night for her, 2.6 rebounds, nearly three steals per game, uh, a great free throw percentage, near 82% just shy of 52 from the field and then nearly 36% from behind the line. Uh, we were talking a little bit about her sister, Emily, a standout player for them last year. Uh, little sis emulating a lot of things of her game, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 13 points a game. And you hear a lot of the NBA guys talk about 50, 40, 90. She's a senior in high school and almost in the 50, 40, 90 club. You, I mean, you can't ask for anything better offensively than what she does. And so she's going to need to have a big night or afternoon, I should say, as they take on the homestanding Mohawk, Mohawk Lady Warriors led by head coach Bruce Hannum, 11-3, 5-1 in the conference. They're just shy of 52 points per game, 30.9 boards, so they really put a lot of emphasis on grabbing those rebounds. Uh, they turn the ball over just shy of 15 times per game. 
from the field for them. They're you know not quite as good of a free throw shooting team. 50.6% so far this year, uh, near 45% from the field, 24.4% from three. Uh, but they're on an absolute tear. They've won eight of their last nine games, and the only loss in that stretch has been to Colonel Crawford that back on December 29th. Yeah, and I mean, that only lost to a very surprising Colonel Crawford team this year. But rebounds, rebounds, rebounds for this team. They've got one of the tallest girls we're going to see all year in Emily Klopp, which is who we're getting ready to go over and take a look at. 6'3 in girls basketball. She's going to get all the boards that she wants to get with no issues at all. Let's do exactly that, Joshua. Let's take a look at Miss Klopp. Uh, we've been keeping our eye on her all year long on our stat leaders. 13.9 uh, points per game, just shy, as you said, of 10 rebounds per game. And she gets in this 1.3 assist as well, shooting nearly 62% from the field. Uh, like you said, it's an absolute treat uh, to be able to be here and watch her play, and I know we're both excited to see what she has to offer. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Average is almost a double-double, shooting 60%. Most of those shots are going to be layup attempts from the post. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So pregame here at Mohawk High School in Sycamore, Ohio. We'll take a look at our keys to victory and starting lineups for both teams just here in a few moments, but public address announcer reading off the standard protocols and we'll have the national anthem in just a few moments. So we'd like to welcome you in. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, drop us a comment this afternoon. Let us know who you're rooting for, who you're cheering on, where you're watching from. Absolutely excited to be here, be live today for this one. A lot of fun to be here live and free, but I tell you what, Hayden, this might be one of the smallest gyms that we've been in all year. Yeah, it's nice and tight, and the gym's packed with fans, so now we'll take a moment and pause for the playing of our national anthem. National Anthem wrapped up, and now let's take a look at the starting lineups. Let's start with the homestanding Mohawk Lady Warriors. Tonight on the floor, they'll have A.J. Chevalier, Bailey Sheets, Emily Klopp, Joe Lee Hamilton, and Mia Miller. Those are this afternoon's starters for the Lady Warriors. On the other side, for Buckeye Central, Kate Cecil locking it down at the point, Sydney Worm, Kennedy Deppin in the middle, Riley Conser and Paige Colleen are your starters for the Lady Buckets of Buckeye Central. And now let's take a chance and take a look at our keys to victory. First, we'll start with Buckeye Central and what we feel needs to come out in their game today to have success here on the road. First, they need to spread the love. They're one of those teams, uh, obviously a heavy focus on ball movement and assist and then clean and controlled. We know that it's going to be a tough defensive battle today against the Warriors. So uh, play a nice clean and controlled game and try and limit those turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. If they, if they continue to pass the ball around the way they pass the ball around, they're not going to have any issues at all. Uh, this Buckeye Center, or this Mohawk team loves to run a zone. I spoke with Coach Cable before the game. He said they're going to run a zone. They want to stop them. Kate Cecil is going to have to have a huge game from the three-point line, I think, for Buckeye Central to come out on top. Now we'll take a look at the keys to victory for the homestanding Mohawk Lady Warriors, and they're going to need to do the following. Have the way of the Warrior protect home court, and as well as protecting that three-point line, Kate Cecil, just one of the girls on that Buckets team that likes and has no hesitancy to pull up from deep. 
So those are a few things they'll need to do to take care of business here at home. Yeah, and I think another thing that we're going to see them do is they have two players on this team other than Emily Klopp and Bailey Sheets and Jolie Hamilton. If they get hot, they're going to put points up. They're going to score the ball. So it's really going to come down to Emily Klopp's going to work the post. Coach Hate Capel said she's going to get hers. But we don't want to let any of these shooters that they have beat us from three. Absolutely. You know, I'm glad you had a chance to catch up with head coach Abram Capel before the game. Uh, this is a big test for them. And despite it just being 1.30 in the afternoon, the atmosphere in here, uh, a lot of people packed into this one. Uh, nice day outside, so perfect opportunity to come watch some high school hoops. But that'll just about do it for the pregame show, which was brought to you tonight by Spherion Mid-Ohio. Let's get to work. First quarter, tip off just a few minutes away. And we're off and running. Warriors with the ball. They possess it first. They fire away a shot that's going to take a bounce, but able to stay saved. Kick back up top to Chevalier. She kicks it over to the corner. That three takes a bounce off the back of the rim. Battle for the rebound. They'll say it was last touch by Klopp. So Buckeye Central now with their first chance to get their hands on the ball. Great job there by Kennedy Deppin to box out Klopp and not let her come over top to get that rebound. Cecil brings the ball up the court for Buckeye kicks it over to Concert. Now working things with Worm. It looks like they're running a 2-3 zone, but it's more of a matchup zone. They've got Jolie Hamilton, their best defender, chasing Cecil. Cecil tried to go inside to Deppin, but that ball stripped away by Chevalier. Now the Lady Warriors heading down the court for their second possession. Sheets guarded by Cecil. They tried to kick it to the corner to Jolie Hamilton, but too much sauce on that pass. Their first turnover of the day. Which team wants to score first? Kind of a similar thing last night at the boys game that I was at. A couple minutes went by, a couple turnovers traded off, but once you get on the board, the scoring started to flow. Buckeye Central looks to do so here. Worm kicks it to Deppin in the corner. Back to Worm, thought about a three. Cecil will take one, though, and that one just rims out. Offensive rebound to Colleen. No reset. And that's one of the advantages that Buckeye Central could have with Mohawk running this zone that they're running as Deppin's going to look. She's going to kick. Concer fires away a triple. Riley Concer knocks down first her first points. shot. But Buckeye Central is really going to be able to attack the offensive glass with this zone that they're running. We're going to see if that's something that Mohawk's going to stay in the whole game or not. So 3 nothing, Mohawk can't get on the board. Deppin corrals the rebound. She's off and running. Concer with some space, kicks it over to Worm in the corner. Navigating the zone fairly well right now. A lot of patience displayed by the Buckets, and, that, and that's kind of what you have to have when you're going up against this fierce zone of the Warriors. Yeah, absolutely, patience, find the open shot. We know Buckeye Central can shoot the ball from three as Cecil's gonna hoist another one, and she knocks this one down. Second three-pointer in the last few moments for the Buckets. It's six nothing, 5.20 to play here in quarter number one. Hamilton. On the left side, picks up her dribble. Klopp battling with Deppin down in the paint. It'll be a turnover. Deppin looking to take it coast to coast. Puts up the shot. Doesn't go, but she draws the foul. Yeah, it's a great job by Kennedy to, to play defense on Klopp down in the post and then get the steal and have the run out. First foul of the day on the Warriors. That one going against Hamilton. That'll be her first. First free throw, no good from Deppin. No substitutions here at this first break, just three minutes in to the first quarter. Second free throw's up and it's good. It's 7-0, Buckets early. Full court pressure applied from Buckeye. Hamilton navigates her way to the far side. She's guarded by Concer. 
kick it off to Chevalier. Ball movement now going to be crucial. Tight defense being played from the Buckets. That one all over, blocked down by Worm. Cecil comes away with it. She's thinking about another triple, and it's good. Time out. Mohawk, they want to think things over. Kate Cecil, again, take a look on our BS Media. Instant replay, dribbles up. Sheets tried to get a hand in her face, but there was nothing that they could do as Cecil knocks down her third triple of the first quarter. Not much you can do when the shooter that confident comes down. She has no intention of passing the ball. She's got an open lane. She's pulling up as soon as she can, and she's just one of those confident shooters. Excuse me, that was just Cecil's second, but still, what a, a remarkable start for the Buckets after those few scoreless minutes that other triple came from Riley Concer. Again, Hayden Gray, Joshua Banks with you from Mohawk High School today. Would like to welcome you to the broadcast if you're watching on channel one channel three excuse me of our youtube today or on facebook drop drop us a comment let us know who you're rooting for this play has resumed sheets guarded by concert a few dribble moves inside ref gotta say she carried and that'll be their third turnover of the first quarter. Still scoreless, 10-0 here. That's exactly what Coach Capel said he wanted to do. Ball pressure the guards, force turnovers, and don't let them feed Emily down low. So Concer will bring the ball up the floor. Kicks it to Cecil. and You can tell they really trust any of the girls out there with the ball in their hands to lead things as Worm fires away. And the three-point barrage continues. Coach Hanum wants a timeout. Let's take one more look on our BS Media instant replay. Fourth triple knocked in the first frame for Buckeye Central, and it's 13-0. 4-5 from three to start the first quarter for these Lady Buckets. I mean, defensively, they've had a couple open looks, but like Cecil's first three that she knocked down, she had a hand in her face. So they're just, it's what these Lady Buckets do. They shoot the ball. And you really couldn't ask for a better shooting performance. We took a look uh, during pregame. Uh, Buckeye Central, of course, shooting 32.4% from the three-point line this year. And so far, that number getting a nice boost here today, lighting up that Danner's towing and recycling scoreboard. As we're back to action. Got to take a bit of a pause. Clock was still on the timeout. Going to reset things. Scoreboard timeout was still. You could see down there on our clock. And a great chance for me to plug on the Danners towing and recycling scoreboard. Got things resituated now, though. As Sheets inbounds the ball. And if you're Mohawk, they just got to look for offense to come from somewhere. Foul caught on the floor, so won't be any free throws. First team foul for the Buckets. It's going to go on Cecil. Obviously her first of the day, but, you know, as we spotlighted her during pregame, they usually look for Klopp, who gets the rock, and gets them on the board for the first time today. They usually looked for her to be that score, but so far Deppin been guarding her very fiercely in the paint. Well, no, she just uses her size. She gets position on the inbound. She catches, and she goes right up. Doesn't even take a dribble. She goes right up with the ball. BC brings things back out to the top. Concer kicks it to Worm. Thought about lining up a three, but again, patience paying off. Deppin will fire away, and it's knocked down. The three-point entourage make it five in the first. Paige Colleen, the only bucket that doesn't have a triple yet in the first quarter, so stay tuned to see if she'll get her hands on it as the Warriors turn things over. Cecil says, why not? Splash! And Mohawk needs another timeout. I'm just gonna show you the replay, folks. Check out the BS Media instant replay. 
Can't make this stuff up. Kay Ciesel now hits her third. She's got nine, and it's 19 to two. Six three-pointers. Hands down the best shooting performance I've seen in a first quarter of either gender this year Absolutely. on the boys or girls side. Absolutely the best shooting quarter we've seen. But the thing about it is with Mohawk running the zone that they're running, a 2-3 zone, they use that, they run that because they've got Klopp in the middle. Mm -hmm. They don't want to play man-to-man -man because I don't know if they don't think they can keep up with them. But when you're playing against a team like Buckeye Central, and anybody that's watched Buckeye Central, we followed them last year as far as they went, they want to shoot the basketball. You really, it's really hard to run a zone against them, especially shooting the ball the way they're shooting it today because they're going to beat you with their shot. They're going to beat you from three. So be curious to see how long Coach Hannum stays in this 2-3 zone before he switches maybe to a man-to-man -to, -man to prevent that shot. And, I mean, that was a team last year that you bring up that was loaded with three-point talent. Uh, Kate's older sister, Emily Cecil, on that team, Claudia Piper. Uh, and it's safe for me to say, uh, didn't see a first quarter quite like the Buckets are having today, really at any point last year. So, you know, some high talent that they're emulating and just keeping on the floor this year. Mohawk hey. kicks it inside to Klopp, puts it up. She's got all four points for the Warriors, and like you said, that height, she doesn't even need to put the ball on the floor. No, it's catch and go straight up, and that's what they want to do. If you're Buckeye Central and Coach Capel, and he even said this as well, she's going to get her points. We're going to play the best defense we can. She's going to get hers. Well, and another statistic, if it gives you any idea how they're navigating the zone and with the presence of Klopp, no points coming from anywhere but the three-point line or the free-throw line for the Buckets here in quarter one. All 18 from three-point land, and then the one free throw that Deppin hit. So it shows you the impact Klopp has. They don't want to take it inside. No, absolutely they don't, and their three-point shots are open shots. I mean, they're taking the smart shots. So 15-point lead here, 136 to play. Cecil, I believe the first time she's missed from the three-point line, rebound crowd. And that was like Moa. college three right there. That was, was deep. deep. 120 seconds left here in the first quarter. Sheets trying to work the far side against Cecil. Kicks it back out to Miller. Back inside to Klopp. Puts it up, but foul caught on the floor. Excuse me, she will be headed to the free throw line. And then I'll reverse myself again. There was a little bit of discussion. Coach Hanum definitely thinks she should be there, but official giving his reasoning said she was in a passing motion. So they'll inbound the ball. Looking to get it to Chevalier. She wasn't there. Can't knock the fact that that one was in the act of shooting, though. So Warriors will be heading to there. First free throw attempts of the night. That foul going against Metzger. And if you're Mohawk, that's what you have to do in the situation. You know, they're they're going to double. They're going to triple clop on the inbounds. Somebody else rolls back door. If they don't help off a clop, they're going to be wide open for a potential layup or two shots at the free throw line. So first free throw knocked down. Looking to make it two. And gets it no problem. 19 to 6. Deficit reduced to 13. Riley Concert will bring the ball up the floor. As I mentioned, the substitution was Cecil, Nevaeh Williams. Nevaeh Metzger checked in for the Buckets. That's the five on the floor. Colleen working down low, calling for the ball, but the presence of Klopp, not only the height, but the wingspan. Been locking down the paint all quarter long. Yeah, it's tough to get the ball in the post when you've got a 6'3 girl down there. Not just 6'3, but very, very long. As That's a great pass. Paige Colleen will be heading to the line. Just take one more look. It was a nice pass, and then the hack was Jolie Hamilton. That's going to be her second foul team's second. Colleen looking to get into the scoring column, and she knocks down the first. Bailey Sheets will check back in for the Warriors. 
And that was a great job by Metzger to get to the free throw line. Klops collapsed on her, and she dished it to the person in the post. If they want to feed the post, that's how they're going to have to do it. Your guard's got to get to the free throw line. Klops going to play up to stop a floater or a little jump shot. Bounce pass to the post. Perfectly executed there. And Klopp will come out with the final 34 seconds. Take her first breather of the day. So Mohawk going to have to look to someone else to get on the scoreboard. They kick it to Josie Granada. Now back to Chevalier. 15 seconds remaining. Mia Miller kicks it over to Chevalier. Trying to feed it inside, but... There's nowhere to go. Someone's going to have to take a shot. Mia Miller kicks it out. Last second shot heaved up, but no good. So that will wrap things up at the end of one. Buckeye Central out to a 21-6 lead here in the first quarter over the Mohawk Lady Warriors. You're watching high school basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Second quarter action underway here in Sycamore from Mohawk High School. That's Buckeye Central out to a 21-6 lead. Hayden Gray, Joshua Banks with you this afternoon. And the shooting, the whole story of the first quarter from Buckeye Central. Cecil back into the ball game. Buckeye has their five starters back on the court. Great pass inside to Deppin. Shot just short, though, rebound to Miller. And you see even with Klopp off the floor, Mohawk coach Hannum still content to run this 2-3 zone. Yeah, not backing down. And as you mentioned, yeah, Klopp starts the second quarter on the bench. Rebound to Worm. Looking to push the tempo. Kotzer will slow things down. So now is a chance, Deppin, pretty even matchup with Mia Miller there in the post. But, you know, Kennedy, one of those girls that can step outside and knock down a three as well. Foul on the floor. Looks like that one going on AJ Chevalier, her first team third. And just like that, clock back into the game. And we'll have our first timeout called by head coach Abram Capel. So just a minute and a second in to the second quarter here from Sycamore. Again, we'd like to welcome everyone. If you're just joining us, while we have a brief moment, we'd like to thank our sponsors, bringing you this afternoon's action live and free. Spherion Mid-Ohio, Danner's Towing and Recycling, BS Media Pros, and Frito-Lay. Those are your sponsors for today's action. That's coming to you live and free right here on Facebook and YouTube. Also going on this morning, you know, that kicked off at about 10 a.m. Some wrestling over at Crestview High School. Joshua, I know you and I both fairly content that we didn't have the 8.30 curtain call that our crew over there had, but uh, not sure if it's still going on or not. But if you want to check out some high school wrestling, you can tune into our main channel or our Facebook page as well. And we'll touch later on what's coming up later tonight as action resumes here. Granada working it against Cecil. Going to put up a mid-range, but blocked by as, Kate. And now as you see, Buckeye Central miss a three for the first time, and I couldn't tell you <laughs> how long on that last possession. Five starters out there for Buckeye. Deppin going to try and work it inside against Klopp. 
puts up a shot, but that's blocked. And I mean, you, you've just got to absolutely put so much arc on that if you're going to try and shoot over her. So long at 6'3", long arms. I mean, she played that perfectly. Kennedy did the right thing by trying to fall away, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, you definitely got to fade away and you got to put some arc on it. But Klopp just has such a great reach. And you see right there, foul on the floor, but she just demands so much attention. You know, three buckets come in quickly, either trying to strip that ball or, or put a body on her to not make it as easy. Well, and you're going to see the last two times that Klopp's caught the ball in the post, you've had three buckets instantly collapse on her. So if somebody decides to hit a couple of shots for the Lady Warriors, they're going to be able to get right back in this game. Absolutely. Shooting from the field hasn't been there yet, but if they can add that in, it will be big. Another foul issued this time. It'll go against Concer. Again on the floor. Fifth team foul on Buckeye. A couple here in the last few seconds, so something they'd like to avoid. As Deppin's going to pick up her second in yes, as many me. seconds. So she'll take a seat. Deep shot fired away. Couldn't bank it in. Buckeye heads back down the court. Checking in for Deppin was Evac. That triple from Worm no good. Battling for her own rebound. Foul called on Granada though along the sidelines. So it'll be staying right down here. Fourth foul on the Lady Warriors. Concer running the point. And again, they're content to try and work that inside outside game. Some crafty passing here. But again, that paint just locked down by the likes of Klopp and Miller. So Cecil will put up a three and she's gone. I guess you could say cold her past few shots from this side, but cannot knock the, the numbers they put up in the first. So. And they're still getting open shots. They're going to fall. Klopp goes up to get that one, but she's going to take a few too many steps. She knew it too. Able to laugh that one off. Take one more look. The athletic catch, but just tried to take the step around Evac. Wasn't able to do so. That's almost one of those where you catch that, take one bounce. Absolutely. First, excuse me, fifth turnover on Mohawk. Just one so far in the first half for Buckeye Central. Worm going to navigate things this time. Risky pass, tipped by Helton, and that'll be a turnover, so they're second. Great job there by the opposite side, elbow on that 2-3 zone to step up and knock that pass away as they tried to get it to the free throw line. So a slow scoring quarter halfway here through the second frame. Just two points for Buckeye Central in the quarter. Ball tipped out of bounds, staying with the Lady Warriors. But after a 19-point first quarter, only two scored in the second. And this is a, it's a testament to Mohawk's defense. They've really stepped it up. They're not giving them the open looks they did. Yes, Buckeyes missed a couple open shots, but Mohawk's defense playing a lot better here in the second. Triple fired away by Chevalier. No good rebound to Klopp and gets it to roll. Using her height, using her length to get the rebound, put it right back up again. Not even thinking about taking a dribble with it. Up and strong. Klopp with six of the Lady Warriors. Eight points. Worm left alone. Fires a three. No good. And rebound to Chevalier. So, uh, you know, I think it's safe to say about four and a half minutes into the second quarter, uh, the Lady Warriors would be considered your winner of, of the second quarter, at least the first half for now. Absolutely. And they're doing what they're used to. They're, they're feeding the post as there's a turnover. Now a fast break for Kate. She adjusts but can't get the layup to fall. Rebound to the Warriors. Almost adjusted too much there. Mm -hmm. Maybe could have went up into the body and got the foul. Klopp to Miller. Over to Granada. It was no good. Rebound to Kate Cecil. So we're off and running again. Concer kicks it to Kate. 
And they'll begin to swing things around. Evac now. Two forty left to go in quarter number two. Twenty-one eight Buckeye Central lead. Coach Capel wants to reset the offense. And now Buckeye Central just wants to eat some clock, daring Bailey Sheets to come up and try and initiate that countdown. Very extended zone here. Yeah, Klopp now almost hovering around the free throw line. And it continues to work for them as they, the you know, Buckeye Central's gone a bit cold from the field. And the standoff continues. I mean, after, after 19 in the first, only two here in the second. Great dump off pass from Klopp, but couldn't be finished by Chevalier. Only two points scored in about the last three and a half, four minutes here of quarter number two. Those coming from Klopp. Back around the three and a half minute mark. And like you said, the, uh, the full defensive zone from Mohawk right now. Really giving, you know, Buckeye Central the opportunity to just pass it around, eat some clock, but also prohibiting them from doing much scoring. They brought that wing corner defender all the way up top here to guard this, make them shoot the ball, but is that really something you want to do after the first quarter that the Lady Buckets had? Right, it's tough. Right now they probably feel confident enough to do it, and, and it's Beneficial because they can just line kind of let Klopp say, hey, hover in this area and don't leave it. Uh, and she just gets to focus on the paint. But looks like Buckeye pretty consent to just let the clock run. One shot. And the zone is kind of like a chess match, trying to work against it offensively. It's not something, you know, obviously they probably practiced against it the last few weeks um, and previously when they matched up with them. But... It's not something you're super used to all the time. Not too many teams at least know how to run it as effectively as Mohawk does. Yeah, and they run it very, very effectively. I mean, up or Buckeye Central had a huge first quarter shooting the ball. But ever since then, this zone's really gave them some troubles. Foul called on Hamilton. Down to 30 seconds and counting in the first half. Buckeye Central's had the ball down on this side for about the last minute and a half. Zone's a little bit more aggressive, and now Klopp all the way out to the three-point line. Buckeye nearly turns it over. They've just got to get anything up. They've got Evac wide open. No one's going to get her. Gets the field goal. Five seconds and counting. Half-court shot heaved up. But it's got to be no good. That brings us to halftime. Your score, 23 to 8. Buckeye Central leads. Coming up at halftime, stats, analysis, and more. So don't go anywhere. Joshua Banks and I will be right back. You're watching High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. 
If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Tonight's broadcast was brought to you by these generous sponsors right here that you see on your screen. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. Danner's Towing and Recycling, 24-hour local or long-distance light or heavy towing and recovering. Get a hold of Danner's Towing for all your towing needs. BS Media Pros. Need a commercial to showcase your business or promote that you're hiring? BS Media Productions is the most affordable, high-quality production company in North Central Ohio. Find them on Facebook, BS Media Pros, today. Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. Those are your sponsors for this afternoon's broadcast. Be sure to check out the goods and services and products that they provide in and around the area. Or if you're a business not a part of today's broadcast but are interested in helping sponsor a live stream or season, contact anyone in our sales department today. Buckeye Central 23, Mohawk 8. We'll be right back in just a few moments to break down those first half stats.
We welcome you back now for the halftime show brought to you tonight by Spherion Mid-Ohio, back here in Sycamore, Ohio at Mohawk High School where the Buckeye Central Lady Buckets lead 23-8. Hayden Gray, Joshua Banks with you here at the half. And without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look at those numbers because we already know not too much that we're going to talk about. Uh, but for BC, seven field goals, six of those were triples, uh, seven rebounds, two turnovers, five fouls, and two of three from the free throw line. For the Mohawk Lady Warriors, just three field goals all coming from Klopp, no three-pointers, nine rebounds, two, excuse me, six turnovers, four fouls, and one of two from the free throw line. The first quarter was huge for the Lady Buckets. All six of those threes came in the first quarter at a 19-point first quarter. The Lady Warriors extended their zone a little bit, pressured them a little bit more before they crossed half court, and it kind of forced a couple mistakes. Not very many turnovers, but maybe some shots that were forced, things like that that the Lady Buckets couldn't knock down. But we have to see for the Mohawk Lady Warriors who that's not named Emily Klopp is going to step up offensively and give them some buckets. Absolutely, because on the other side, Kate Cecil in that first half, nine points, three triples as they lead Mohawk 23-8. to eight. Uh, She cooled off a little bit in the second quarter, but still uh, probably one of the more impressive shooting performances as a whole unit, but from her to uh, only missing the one triple in the first quarter, uh, that was a treat to watch. It was a lot of fun to watch, and it's the confidence that she has. I think we see girls that want to shoot the ball, but we don't see them shoot it confidently. And that's something that we just seen her do in that first half. I mean, she had no issue. It didn't matter if it was where it was. She was pulling up. Absolutely. So just a few seconds away, and we're off here in quarter number three. Ball passed around. Klopp trying to work it inside. Crowd back out now in the corner. Interior defense locking it down. That'll be a travel. A little bit of contact there, but Bailey Sheets couldn't keep her steps. So the first turnover of the half. If you're just joining us, we'd like to welcome everyone to Mohawk High School. for some third quarter action. Cecil looking to pick up where she left off. Give her her 4-3 of the game. And how about the pass from Riley Cancer from the close side of the other side of half court all the way across to the other wing on the other side of the court in the air. I mean, that's impressive. 26-8 lockdown defense being played by Worm on the side. So now they go back up to Sheets. She kicks it to Cavalier. Chevalier, excuse me. I saw that and I've just been thinking Cleveland Cavaliers all day long. Miller almost got the floater to fall. Rebound corralled and Klopp puts it back up. And there she is using her size, using her height. She's got eight of their 10. Defense locked down up top. Jolie Hamilton forced the turnover. Sheets brings it down, but BC gets back in time. Interior pass to Klopp. She was faced off with Depp and tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Buckeye Central. And I think one thing I've noticed, when they feed her the ball, she doesn't want to take a dribble. Mm -hmm. She knows how tall she is, but sometimes, even when you're the size that she has, you have to take a dribble with the ball when you catch it. Yeah, she is looking to shoot immediately. The problem is, too, when she has gotten the rock, uh, BC collapsing in very quickly, so not much room for her to try and get one of those dribbles down. Deppen puts up a short range shot that goes off the side. Colleen got a hand on it, but Klopp walks away with the board. Two minutes into the second half. 16 point lead for the Buckettes. Working it around the outside. 
Now Klopp gets it near the three-point line. That's probably much more of a spot that Buckeye Central would like her to receive the ball. Foul's called. That'll go on Riley Conser. Her first, first foul for Buckeye Central here in the second half. Granada will check in for Mohawk, and Nevea Metzger will check in for Buckeye Central. Sydney Worm will take a seat. Klopp inbounds the ball, kicks it outside to Chevalier. That three, no good, but fouled. Klopp will be head to the free throw line. Right place, right time. Foul goes on Paige Colleen, her first team second. First free throws, only the third and fourth that will be attempted for the Lady Warriors so far today. First free throw is up. And takes an awkward bounce off the back of the hoop, so that'll be no good. Big second free throw coming on now. Klopp fires it away, hits the right side. No good, Page locks down the rebound. Deppin looking to drive, ball gets stripped. The crowd by Colleen. <laughs> kind of gave me a laugh. You see Metzger run in the paint like that and then immediately run out. They just know that that's not going to. There's not too many matchups, if any, that can match up down there. But Deppin trying to attack. No good. And I think Klopp still stepped down inside of her and got a hand on that ball. So Granada kicks it to Bailey Sheets. Ball tipped by Concer. And now Granada in a very tough place. Cecil trying to lock her down right in front of her own bench. A nice job, Cecil, having the awareness of where the pass was coming in. Three point fired up, no good. Rebound to Kate herself. She's got Metzger cutting to the hoop. Too strong on the layup. Miller clarows the board. It's a great job by the Lady Buckets on that run out there, just unable to convert. Miller will pull up for the mid-range jumper. Looked like it was going to be all but in, but just bounces out. Now you see Buckeye with a lot of that space that they had at the second quarter. And I think you could hear Coach, you know, saying let them shoot it. He really wants to try and force that hand. But now we're kind of getting to that point where Riley Conser is just going to do that. She is going to shoot it, and she'll put it in for a deep two. And, I mean, the Lady Buckheads are saying if you're going to let her shoot it, we're going to knock it down. Right, and with a comfortable 18-point lead, Notice how I say comfortable, but you know you know they're not content with it. Uh, I know we talked about Coach Capel. Really usually not comfortable until they're up by a substantial amount. We, we acknowledged it wasn't a 40 point lead or any of the such like that, but just given the situation of what we're, the environment we're here today. The zone that Mohawk wants to run, the shooters that Buckeye Central has, just doesn't equal to with 11 minutes left to play. Uh, it's going to be tight to overcome that 18-point deficit. Absolutely it is. I mean, you've got you've to do something else defensively to stop Buckeye Central from shooting the ball. You definitely don't want to let them shoot the ball, especially with the first quarter that they had. Right, you're kind of single-handedly relying on them to not, not knock down their shots. I mean, the second quarter, they obviously did have some struggles from the field, but you're not doing anything to pressure the ball and create turnovers unless you're able to intercept one of those passes. The biggest thing they're doing right now is they are shadowing Cecil. That's what they want to do right now. Right, and that probably, you know, wanting to create that illusion that she has some space and then close in on her right away. So far, they've been calm and collected, but a great turnover forced by Miller, and that's exactly what I mentioned. You need to see that, uh, the Warriors crashing those passing lanes. 
Absolutely. So that's how they're going to try and force turnovers. It's just the amount of time that it takes uh, may not bode in their favor. Well, I think that's something we've seen through the first, you know, two and a half quarters of this game is the Lady Warriors offense runs through Emily Klopp in the post. And it takes so long for her to get into position and to get the ball that it's tough to score points in a quick fashion. Worm nothing but net triple. That's BC 21s. The Lady Warriors nearly stripped away by Concert. Fed inside to Klopp who had three on her. But a nice jumper put up by Brooklyn Helton, the senior. You did a great job to catch that ball that was tipped away from Klopp and just shoot it right away. You're wide open, shoot the ball. Looks like they're going to extend that zone again, but leave Klopp down low. They don't want Klopp to come up to leave that wide open back door again. Yeah, she's just kind of balancing back and forth between Evac and Colleen right now, but Worms feeling it. Second triple in about the last 60 seconds. And Buckeye Central not taking that pressure off either. You know, it's a soft press, but trying to bother Mohawk the whole way. Beautiful pass inside from Klopp. Miller misses on the first chance, gets her own board and battles for the second chance look. Great job there by Klopp to find Miller and then by Mia Miller to fight for that second chance and put the second one in. So with 10 seconds, Worm thought about a third triple but wants to hold on to the final shot. Fouls called. That one going on Brooklyn Helton, her first team second. Question, that may be just their first foul. Kennedy Deppin will check in for the final six seconds. And so will Mara McDougal. They'll relieve Paige Colleen. Mara McDougal getting some varsity time after she had 13 in the yeah. JV game. And that's not the girl you want to leave the final shot. And Kate Cecil, Kate Riesel, as I've seen her dad tweet out, make some pay. It's 37 to 14. We're heading to the final quarter here from Mohawk High School. Don't go anywhere, folks. Money time on the way after this. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market, and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Money time here from Mohawk High School. Fourth quarter action. Hayden Gray, Joshua Banks with you as Mohawk trails to Buckeye Central. 37-14. That one right there. Knocked down a huge three at the end of the quarter and continues to make it rain. Her sixth three-pointer of the day. It's 40-14. to Kate Cecil gets separation. Step back three. I mean, how do you defend that? You know, we, we just talked about potential MVP candidates between the two quarters during the break. Kate Cecil kind of 
making the case for herself even stronger right now. Kicks it up court to Deppin, who gets the pretty layup to fall. 42-14, BC. Great pass from Cecil there too. I mean, led her perfectly. Deppin finishes with the left, which I'm sure Coach Capel's happy to see. So if you're just tuning in this afternoon, it's been all Buckeye Central all afternoon long. For the Warriors though, Emily Klopp, as she just gets two to fall, she's been who they've leaned on. And she has 10 of their 16 here this afternoon. Yeah, and I mean, the score doesn't show it, but Emily's had a really, really good game. I mean, rebounding the ball, she's got 10 points. There's another three balls up. No good, but the tip from Colleen allowed Deppin to get a hand on it, but Klopp says, no, not in my paint. Her length is just something amazing to watch. Absolutely. Six thirty left to play in the final quarter. Buckeye Central pretty comfortably get a cruise to another big Northern Ten victory today as they sit atop the Northern 10 right now, which is interesting though. Uh, you know, definitely not as a one-sided league as it was last year. Uh, a lot of teams uh, playing competitive ball. These two out here as the turnover forced from Mohawk. But I mean, Mohawk, uh, Winford, Colonel Crawford, Buckeye Central, a lot of good ball being played in the Northern 10 on the girls' side this year. Absolutely, it's been a fun league to watch. We've got to see most of these teams compete Covering Upper Sandusky yeah, the Upper way Sandusky. we have. Can't forget them. Deppin swings it to three soul. Can't get the bounce. Nearly tipped out though, but Mohawk able to corral the board. Almost got the roll too, I mean. Just too much power on the shot there. That'll be the last touch by Bailey Sheets. Uh, now we'll take a chance uh, tonight. A few games coming up. Uh, a couple of great ones that we'll have for you live and free uh, over on channel four of our YouTube and our main Facebook page. Uh, we'll have the Crestline Bulldogs taking on Cardington on the boys side. That'll be at 7.30. Travis Berardi and Mark Bullinger on the call for that one. So you can check out some boys action later, but I think the game, everyone's got their eyes on for later uh, from Lucas. It'll be Colonel Crawford coming in to take on the Cubs. Uh, that'll be on our main YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Joe Baylaw, Brian Skronsky on the call. Uh, I know that one's got your interest a lot too, Joshua. Yeah, it's a potential district championship matchup. Which team's going to come to play? Those Lucas Cubs are scrappy. They're always scrappy. But the Eagles are the Eagles. Rebound fought for, but ends up in Cecil's hands. Nice off the ball moves from Deppin. And, and I think the thing you like most too is that Coach Capel, as Cecil gets the floater to fall. Uh, Coach Capel down on one knee, you can see him there. I mean, the dude coaches just as fierce through all four quarters as a timeout is called. The guy coaches just as fierce uh, I think till the final second, as you would even with this comfortable lead, nearly 30 points. His demeanor and the way he coaches never changes no matter what the lead is. And that's something that's very, very important as a coach. Never be, never be overconfident, never be underconfident. Everything stays the same no matter the game situation. And that's how Coach Capel is. And that's why he's built such a successful program at Buckeye Central. Also, uh, we have a chance too. something we were talking about a little bit earlier during the broadcast. You and I not over there, but also going on right now, some live and free wrestling from Crestview High School. Uh, several mats being wrestled on today. I'm not even sure off the top of my head how many teams are there. I know it's quite a few. Uh, eight? Eight to ten, I think I seen this morning. Yeah, I know. It kicked off yesterday. Um, and so day two of wrestling going on at Crestview High School. That's on our main YouTube channel right now and our Facebook page. So 
on a secondary device. If you're a fan of wrestling, grab that, turn that on. Uh, I know Brian Skronsky over there this morning, as well as uh, Mark Truax. And I don't know if there's a guy that I have. I haven't had a chance to meet him in person yet, but I don't know if there's anyone that knows more about high school wrestling besides some of the staples uh, of Mike Skelton and Bruce Wyrick. But Truax, uh, a wrestling legend up there with the best of them. He's on commentary as well today. So uh, not sure exactly the end time for the wrestling, but check that out if it sparks your interest. And we've got four minutes left in the action here. Buckeye Central up 44 to 16. So without a monumental implosion, looks to be headed for yet another, I believe their eighth Northern 10 win of the year. Great steal from Klaus, but wasn't able to stay in bounds. And it's a great win for them, especially coming off the, the Winford loss that they had just two N10 matchups ago. Absolutely. Worm inside of Colleen. He'll kick it back outside and reset with Concert. And, I mean, we've seen Coach Capel dribble a minute and a half out. Is he going to be content with just no four shots? We know backdoor, great cut, Woo! great shot. What a pass from Deppin. Yeah, when we get a chance, we'll definitely take another look at that one. Cecil gets her 22nd point in the day. BC's up by 30. Pass inside tip by Colleen. That gives us a chance to check out on our BS Media replay. Check out that pass, threaded the needle, and a great job by Cecil to finish. I mean, you got to time that one up perfectly. Probably about a foot, foot and a half difference between her and Klopp. The chemistry that we've seen today between, you know, these ladies has been astounding. As Klopp gets her 12, she's had a phenomenal game. Yeah, she, she's definitely... Uh, one of the most talented athletes out on the court, Klopp. A phenomenal afternoon. 12 points for her of the 18. And, and just the fact, too, I mean, really, that only break she took in between the first and second quarter probably only rested about a minute as another college range three put up by Cecil. No good. And that was with confidence. I mean, she just hoisted that. You know, we talked about big sis for Emily Cecil playing college ball at Bowling Green. Awesome to see athletes from around the area doing great things at the next level. Timeout, Timeout called by Mohawk. Realized I haven't tuned in to see if we had any comments. And I guess we have some bashful fans today, Joshua. No one, not yet, letting us know where they're watching from or who they're cheering on. But hey, with Two minutes and 45 seconds left to play. If you have any ideas at home who you think should be our BS Media Pros player of the game tonight, anyone you'd like to hear from during the post game, drop us some names in the comments. Let us know who you think has played a deserving game of MVP. I think we know. Uh, it's been several rows, but I think one stands out. So stay tuned for that. But we definitely always encourage you. Let us know who you think. We definitely take that into consideration. Yeah, whoever's watching, interact with us. Give us a little <laughs> extra to do. I mean, see, we, the fun we enjoy I can see talking how many to of you guys. You are there. Uh, I can see there's plenty of you out there watching this afternoon action. So drop us a comment. Let us know what's going on. Play is resumed. Miller kicks it into Klopp looking for points. Four, 13 and 14, and she gets it with ease. When she touches the ball in the post, you're not going to stop her. That's something that she has proved today. It doesn't matter how many Lady Buckets have defended her. When she gets the ball in the post, she's not being stopped. As Cecil hits another one, 25 on the afternoon. I believe that marks, that would be her seventh triple of the afternoon as a foul is called. And she had the two free throw, or excuse me, the two layups, but seven triples from Cecil. What a remarkable performance we're seeing today. And uh, some substitutions now. Mohawk getting some of those starters out as Sheets. Chevalier will take a seat along with Miller. 
So Klopp remains in the game along with some of their youth. That one no good. Curious on if she's close to a point mark or what she's yeah, close to. Yeah, some milestones. What milestones she's close to as Klaus knocks down a three. She was their leading scorer in the JV game. And the first triple of the afternoon for Mohawk. Not a bad time for it to come. A lot of youth out there now. And they're fighting, they're scrappy. Kate says, why not? <laughs> Doesn't get it to fall, but yeah, you kind of get the feeling maybe she is close to a season high or a career high. Because Abram giving her the nod there, kind of letting her know she can keep going for it. I, I'm not sure, maybe about the thousandth point mark could be out there as well. She could be close after the year she's put on so far Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. But she will check out. So Cecil, Worm, and Colleen will take a seat. What a job they've done here today. And hey, we have a, a load of comments from the new Washington community now. I'll read those in just a second, but I was gonna say, Buckeye Central community, after covering you so much last year, I know you're very vocal, I know you're out there, and we absolutely love covering the buckets, so don't be bashful. I know Travis Berardi not with me today, but hey, was right there with him all last year for that magical run. What a time. Read off some of these comments. Ron Claddy, go BC. Denise Heiler, congrats BCHS girls from us at the Classic in the Country going on today as well. Marilyn Worm has a good idea, Josh. All five seniors from BC. That definitely not a bad idea. Might have to definitely consider that, Marilyn. Uh, Cody McNeely, concert, concert for MVP. Liz Com. I probably just butchered her last name, Liz, too, so please don't hate me, but she votes for Riley Concert's MVP. So, hey, you know what? I think we have some ideas now. Let's get something in store for a fun MVP interview. Don't go anywhere. That, of course, coming up right after the end of the game. Down to just 34 seconds and counting. 49-23, Klaus. Knocks down her second triple of the day. Gracie putting up some points. Maybe going to earn herself a little bit more varsity playing time here. I mean, just in two minutes became the second leading scorer on the team for the day. Ball knocked out of bounds. We'll be heading towards the direction of the Lady Warriors. Take a look on our BS Media instant replay at Klaus' second triple of the day. She ain't scared to shoot it. Not at all. So 10 seconds and counting. Klaus with the ball. See if she'll be able to fire off one more. Tried to feed it inside, tipped out. So what ultimately looks like will be the final possession here. Mohawk looking, looking to add on a few more points. Ball stolen by Evac though, and that will all but do it. Time expiring. Shot up from McDougal, but just robbed by the buzzer. So your final score, Buckeye Central 49, Mohawk. 26. Don't go anywhere, though. That MVP interview brought to you today by BS Media Pros coming up next right on the other side of this break. You're watching high school basketball exclusively live and free on the OH Report. to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. 
We know the mid-Ohio job market, and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Back now with our BS Media players of the game, and I'm joined today by all five seniors from Buckeye Central. So first off, we'll start with Kay Cecil. Uh, I think I've seen your dad call you Kate Threesel before. Yeah. <laughs> and that was absolutely who you were today. Seven triples for you, uh, led all scorers too. Tell me what was clicking for you from behind the line tonight. It's no secret that you're a great three-point shooter, but uh, I was kind of at a loss for words in the second <laughs> half. Yeah, we've had a good week of practice, and our whole team has kind of been off these last couple games, so we knew we had to have an on game at some point, and this was the game. Awesome. I'll have you hand it off to Miss Colleen behind you. Paige. Joined now by Paige Colleen. Paige, uh, just talking to Kate, she talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the past few games. At times, yeah. things have felt a bit off. Um, and it was just time for one of these performances where you come out and get everything clicking. Uh, just tell me about the ebbs and flow of today's game because the first time you guys played Mohawk, you know, it was competitive. It was close. You got the win. But today there was just no doubt that, you know, you're the top dogs in the N10. Yeah, I think the first game when we played, everything was kind of off. Like we would, like, make eye contact and then we just wouldn't cut and pass at the same time. And, you know, we haven't played together as a team for very long, really, because we relied on seniors heavily last year. So to be in it like for a whole season now or at least the halfway point in the N10 like things are finally starting to click finally starting to flow and as a team like we all played together really well today I think which is really important all right I'll have you pass it off to Riley okay thank you uh, of course Bye. Yes. all right now I'm joined by Riley Conser. Uh Riley uh, just talking to both Kate and Paige uh, just an absolute dominating performance today um, guys looked really good across the board handled that zone extremely well uh, just showing anybody that if they're gonna make you shoot that that's probably a mistake mm -hmm. uh, just kind of walk me through how you feel about today's performance and moving forward uh, with the rest of the Northern 10 schedule oh yeah I feel really good about it last time we kind of struggled with it a little bit but tonight we just shot lights out I mean that's what you got to do against the zone and that's what we all can do and we just all showed up tonight and played really well together absolutely all right I'll take Sydney quick thank you of course Riley thank Dad. you All right, now 
with Sydney Worm. Uh, Sydney, uh, so far we've just been talking about obviously the shooting performance mm -hmm. um, from everyone today, especially you there in the second half too, uh, started knocking them down for 3 2, 12 combined as a team today. Uh, it's safe to say probably the best three point shooting team in the Northern 10. So, mm -hmm. uh, what are you looking for um, when you're spreading the ball around and against the zone too? Uh, how do you feel the most comfortable and decide when you're going to take those shots? I mean, obviously we're working on driving the gaps, and that's going to leave someone open most of the time. And in, in practice, we practice always drive the gaps, and you're going to find someone open. So we always drive with confidence to know that we're going to have that kick out, and we have the good shooters enough to put it in, and we can trust them to do it. All right. Uh, thanks, Sydney. And finally, I'll end things with Kennedy. All right. Last but certainly not least, join with Kennedy Depp and, uh, you know, obviously – the moral of the story we've been talking about today is just a dominating fashion you guys played with. Um, but something we noticed, I mean, all day long battling with Emily down in the in the paint. Yeah. And, you know, that's not an easy task at all, but it was clear you never gave up with that the entire game and got some good ones to fall. What's it like having to go up against her, and how does it feel, though, to get both wins over uh, another really solid N10 team this year? Um, it's nice. It's really nice to get a good win against them anytime, really. They work hard. You can tell they want to win. They want to win. I think just as bad as any other team in the N10 does it right now. But I mean, I think we wanted it more today. And at the end of the day, I think that's why we work hard in practice. And tonight our shots fell and that worked really well for us. And going against Emily is really tough. I mean, it's not very often you see another girl that's yeah. six, six plus feet tall. So I mean, I'm, I'm teammates with her from the past and working with her, working against her is fun. I think she's a good player. And I mean, it's nice when you can play against your teammates and especially, I mean, a, a challenge like that anytime. Anytime it's fun to go up against someone like that. Absolutely. Well, I know they're still behind you. I don't know if you <laughs> want to bring them back in. Uh, you can collectively Kay. decide. Is there anyone you guys want to give a shout out to today? I know New Washington definitely started tuning out. in. Okay. All right. We would like to shout out Coach Oz for a good week of practice. <laughs> shout out Coach Oz! Woo! <laughs> All right. Well, That'll wrap things up. Again, our BS Media Pros, players of the game, all five seniors from Buckeye Central. We'll take one more short break. Be right back to wrap things up with our final stats. to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and... Welcome back to Mohawk High School. I'm joined now by Buckeye Central head coach Abram Capel. Abram, figured we'd grab you, obviously bring you up here real quick, just to talk about the win today. Um, when you played these ladies the first time, a bit more closer, um, a few games here, the girls ta all talked about how, you know, the last several games and, and weeks of practice have been a little bit tough uh, just due to the nature of play, but it felt really good to go out there and get one of those like today. Just talk to me about uh, the effort of the girls today because uh, this is one of those where all respect to Mohawk, but this was very convincing uh, that, you know, you are a step above uh, in the N10 right now. Yeah, you know, I thought, um, you know, it obviously starts with the defensive end. I thought we did a really good job of um, kind of executing our game plan. Obviously, um, you know, Klopp's a, a fantastic player and a, a tough matchup for anybody. Um, so we used Kennedy to kind of front and, um, you know, just try to make things difficult, right? We understand that she's going to get 12-14 by default, right? Um, we just want to make – 
some of those post-entry passes tough and you don't make our scoring opportunities as limited as we can. Um, and, you know, and with that, I thought we forced um, a few turnovers, which led to some t transition baskets. Um, you know, and then we collected a lot of defensive rebounds. I, I had us down for only giving up five offensive rebounds. That was our goal. We gave up 12 the first time, so I thought we rebounded really well by committee. And then obviously on offense, you know, we had good patience in the first half, first quarter in particular, um, you know, making the one more pass, finding holes in the zone, and then Kate, Sid, Ryan, Ken all had a triple at least in the first quarter and ended with 12 for the game. So anytime you, you know, you're double digits making threes, you're shooting the ball well, and you know, combine that with the defensive effort is, is kind of the result that we got. Absolutely. Those 12 threes, like you said, had us both pretty much at a loss for words. Yeah. But, you know, not a shocker uh, with the with the roster that you have this season. Uh, really, the only other thing I'll talk about the game, when you have to go up and face an athlete like Klopp and then the zone that you looked at today, you know, do you appreciate that as a head coach to have a few different defensive looks that you've had to go up against as you prepare for, for sure. the second half of the season? For sure. Yeah, we, we've seen a good combination. You know, lately we've seen a, a lot of man, um, you know, a lot of face guarding with, Kate and sometimes Rye, and it's you know it's made things difficult to kind of run our offense. Um, you know, but we're making adjustments. Like you said, you maybe you see it later on um, in, in the back half of the season, or you know when the tournament time gets here, and then you have teams like you know Seneca East and um, you know Mohawk and Bucyrus who primarily play zone um, in, in a different variety. Like we've seen some three-two, we've seen some two-three. Um, so it, all of it equips you. Um, we just have to be prepared. Our kids are doing a good job of soaking in the information. I know we give them a lot. Um, we have a lot of sets and, you know, we have a lot of different things and our kids do a really good job of paying attention um, and doing their best of their ability to be able to execute on game day. Well, awesome. Thanks for joining us for yeah. a few minutes. I know, like we said, uh, we got, uh, it looks like an alumni game going on here at Mohawk. I know you said that you're going to opt out even though yeah. your prediction was that you would put up about 50 points in yeah. this ball game. But again, head coach for Buckeye Central, Abram Capel. Thanks for joining us and awesome. obviously... We'll see you the rest of the way this season. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, we'll keep it right here. We'll welcome Joshua back in. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the final stats from the afternoon. See just exactly how things went down as we start officially our post-game show brought to you tonight by Spherion Mid, Ohio. Let's get to work. And your final stats from tonight. Don't know why it says halftime, folks. Ignore it. <laughs> but your final stats tonight. 17 field goals, 12 of those triples from BC, 13 rebounds, 5 turnovers, 7 fouls, and 2 of 3 from the line. 4 Mohawk, 9 field goals, 2 three-pointers, both from Klaus there in the fourth. Uh, 19 rebounds, so Klopp and, and the gang take home that battle. Um, 7 turnovers, 5 fouls, but just 25% from the free throw line. 12 threes, 36 points from the three-point line today. They beat them from three alone. And, and when you can make, like Coach Capel said, when you can make double-digit threes in a high school girls basketball game, you're probably going to win that game 90% of the time. When nope. you add that yeah. you only had five turnovers, that's success. No doubt. Always fun getting to catch up with the philosophical mind of Abram Capel, uh, definitely one of the premier coaches in the area. Uh, we take a look at what's coming up next for the Lady Buckets. They'll take on Seneca East on Tuesday, the 17th, on the road. And next for Mohawk is another matchup that's not going to get any easier. We're very familiar with that upper team that they're going to have to travel to on Tuesday. And since that's a home Rams game, we'll have a crew up there. Um, so look forward to that one tonight. As we alluded to earlier, Colonel Crawford at Lucas. That'll be at 730 on our Facebook page and main YouTube channel. And then Crestline at Cardington. That on Channel 4 of our YouTube and our Facebook page as well. Uh, any final remarks for today or anything you're looking forward to tonight? Any predictions for that Crawford-Lucas game? I, I said it earlier today talking to you. Um, I, I love what Coach Sheldon does at Crawford, but I think it's going to be hard to go into the Cub Cave and beat the it's Lucas Cubs with those Tom's boys playing the way they're playing. I, I think the Lucas Cubs take down the Eagles tonight Ooh. for their fourth loss of the season, but I think that they're going to meet again in a district championship game. Well, hopefully we can, you know, have kind of whatever excitement that's supposed to play out, play out. Tune in tonight for that. But that will wrap up our afternoon from here. Your final score, Buckeye Central 49, Mohawk 26. Would like to thank Mr. Joshua Banks, who you just heard from, running color commentary and camera for me today here from Sycamore. Would like to thank our sponsors, Spherion Mid-Ohio, Danner's Towing and Recycling, 
BS Media Pros, our MVP and Instant Replay sponsor this evening. Spirion, also a commercial sponsor, and Frito-Lay. would like to thank Chip, the athletic director, and the rest of the staff here in the athletic department at Mohawk. And, of course, would like to thank you, the fans. But that'll wrap things up, Buckeye Central. A huge N10 win today. You've been watching high school basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. The future of local sports, all powered by BS Media Productions. Have a safe and happy and fun rest of your evening, folks, and we'll see you on, see you on a live stream near you.